Ten people including two children have been killed and dozens injured as a result of the Russian strike on a residential building in Sumy late on Sunday. Ukrainian authorities say a Russian rocket hit a nine-story building in the city. According to local authorities, 400 people were evacuated from the area which sits 40 kilometers from the border with Russia. Following the attack, emergency service personnel went door to door helping evacuate residents and look for casualties. Russia boasts that it is making gains in Kursk and within Ukraine. However, that belies the fact that Russia is, in fact, losing incredible quantities of soldiers. At this point, signing up to join the Russian army is signing one's own death sentence, says Jake Bro, according to the Kiev Post. Jake Bro, who is well known to those who follow Ukraine's war against Russian aggression for his dynamic, interesting and accurate analysis of what is transpiring in Russia's war against Ukraine. Through his battlefield map updates and articulate explanations, the war commentator has developed a strong following that regularly checks in to see what he thinks will happen next. Bro, in this interview with Kyiv Post, explains what internal pressures Russia is now facing that could well lead the world's largest country to a brutal defeat. Bro gives his candid analysis about what outcome the Kremlin is hoping to see following this November's presidential election in the United States and expresses why he is a strong supporter of Vice President Kamala Harris, despite the arguments that some Ukraine supporters who back Trump make to argue that the former president would do a better job of helping Ukraine to win. Formerly, Bro was a nuclear and missile operations officer in the United States Air Force for six years, where he was in charge of the operations, maintenance and security of the Minuteman III Intercontinental Ballistic Missile System. Currently, Bro is a commentator on the war in support of Ukraine and operates a YouTube channel. According to Western assessments, Russian casualties in the war so far tally up to 115,000 killed and 500,000 wounded. The staggering death toll, estimated to be 10 times higher than Soviet losses during the war in Afghanistan, is difficult to verify but is consistent with the independent open source reports. Using official reports, online obituaries on social media and images of tombstones, the BBC Russian service with the independent website MediaZona have identified the names of 75,000 dead Russians. They estimate the real tally to be between 113,000 to 160,000 deaths. We've seen a significant increase over the past six months, said a spokesperson at MediaZona. There's a lot of crazy headlines, especially concerning the arrival of these 10,000 or so North Koreans. But I think that uh, Putin has given a hard deadline to his generals. And unlike previous deadlines that they've all failed to meet, this one might not be elastic. And the reason why is I think Putin is trying to retake this territory in Kursk prior to Donald Trump taking office on January 20th. There will be talks. There will be negotiations. I'm not saying they're going to be successful. We don't know what Trump's plan really is. I, I, I honestly think he doesn't have a plan. He's coming up with it now. But Putin doesn't want to talk about Kursk. He doesn't want to talk about Ukraine giving back territory in Russia in exchange for anything else. That is a position to negotiate from weakness, not from strength. This is not what the Russians want. So at the moment, casualties are going insane on the battlefield. Just yesterday, uh, the estimated casualty report for the Russian forces was almost 2,000 soldiers killed, captured, or wounded in a single day. This doesn't feel like progress for the Russians. They're panicking about this chunk of the territory, about 1,000 square kilometers, and they want to pretend like this never happened.
Cool, social,